Please welcome David Rubenstein, president of the Economic Club of Washington, D.C. So let me first now go to our uh, special guest, the Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy. Mr. DeJoy, thank you very much for giving us your time today. Uh, thank you, David, for uh, having me. And I want to thank the Economic Club of Washington for uh, paying attention to me at this time. So um, thank you for attending. And just briefly, for those who may not know your background, you are the 75th Postmaster General. Uh, the first one is uh, behind you, I can see, Benjamin Franklin. Mm -hmm. So he was the, the inventor of the post, post office, the Postal Service. And um, you have been, you're a native of New York. Uh, you went to college in Florida, Stetson. And then you uh, went back to your family's business and you built it up. You moved it to uh, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, built it into one of the larger logistics companies in the United States, ultimately merged it with another company. And you've been very involved in philanthropic activities at, at my alma mater, Duke University, among other places. So uh, thank you for giving us your time today. So um, let me ask you at the outset, um, when you... Um, agreed to become Postmaster General, did you realize that you were going to get this much attention? Um, because it's not normally the most famous, uh, you know, position in Washington, D.C., and I doubt if many people can name your immediate mm -hmm. predecessors. You're, you're very well known. Did you expect you would get this much attention? So, uh, David, if I, 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 I may, I think when I, uh, when I accepted the role, we need to remember the uh, situation the Postal Service was in at the time. Uh, it was right at the, the uh, height of uh, the, the beginning of the pandemic, and we were having significant, you know, financial conse uh, uh, consequences at the time. So uh, I was kind of urgently asked to join, and I thought most of the attention would be around, you know, the 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 the, uh, uh, the, the issues of uh, running out of cash in September of 2020. Uh, loss going from 7.8 billion to 20 billion dollars in the projection, and having no no help in sight. That's where I thought uh, 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 the attention would be would be be spent. Instead, we had a lot of uh, uh, media and political attention on uh, 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 things that uh, were very much removed from that, and uh, that was the uh, 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 that was the unexpected okay. <laughs> uh, sense of attention. Any second thoughts about having taken the job? You had a very comfortable life in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. You were very active in philanthropy, and your wife was an uh, ambassador. Uh, what would uh, always be nominated to be an ambassador to Canada? Uh, uh, any second thoughts about taking this job? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, this is a fantastic organization uh, uh, with, very, with very committed people, uh, and uh, I think uh, we have a very promising future if we get a, a few things uh, uh, aligned and, 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 and move forward with, with, with them. And I think I have a certain uh, type of expertise and uh, availability also and willingness to, uh, uh, to engage in uh, this type of uh, activity. So I'm happy, I'm excited. I think the team, I've had a warm welcome from the team here at the Postal Service. Uh, and we are working hard to move forward to get through the election and get on with our, our ambitions to be uh, 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 an exciting player in the uh, uh, marketplace. So, um, as I may have told you, um, I have a special interest in the Postal Service because my father worked in the Postal Service his entire career, retired when he was 55. Um, and I had a summer job once at the Postal Service. My job in college when I was at Duke, in between, I think, freshman and sophomore years, I was a mail carrier, which was actually one of the best jobs I ever had, and um, I enjoyed it. So I have a special interest in the Postal Service. Um, I never got invited back for the second year, um, and I don't know whether you can figure out whether they, I didn't do a good job in the first year. You could dig out the reports. I, I, I thought I did a good job, but um, they didn't probably uh, think so. We, so have I didn't high get back. we have high standards for carriers, and it is a tough job. <laughs> it's not easy, and uh, you know, uh, it was not easy. They gave me a little can of mace, uh, for dogs come after you. And um, so on the first day on the job, I, I, uh, a dog was coming after me. So I, I got out the mace can and I sprayed it. And then unfortunately, three houses later, the owner of the dog came up and said, uh, did you spray my dog? And I said, yes. And she said, well, couldn't you see he's blind and he has no teeth? I said, I, I didn't know. I'm sorry. So anyway, I was the last time I used the mace and maybe that's why I didn't get uh, offered the job for the second summer. In any event, 
I think we saw, I saw where we have about 450,000 dog bites a year. It's, oh, really? Yeah, it's a, it's a big problem for, for our carriers. Okay, well, maybe I was, uh, maybe I, I just picked the wrong dog. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> so um, I'm going to ask you a number of questions, which you've been asked ad nauseum, I'm sure. But I, for our audience, I'd like to kind of go through them again. So um, when you took the job, did you, um, were you asked by anybody at the White House or the president to slow the mail down? Did anybody say slow it down? Uh, no, 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 and a million times no. Uh, I've had very little conversation with the administration. I, uh, uh, the Postal Service is an independent organization. I report to a board of governors, a bipartisan board of governors. Uh, and uh, that's where we, uh, uh, where my plans for what we do at the Postal Service get a, a, approved, those beyond my, my authority. Uh, so to date, we've had no real input. I've had no input from the, Post, from the White House on anything, nor would they have any authority to direct me to do any, anything. And uh, while they may have some great ideas, I, I, I don't know. I haven't heard any yet concerning us. Uh, but all of these would be vetted through our normal uh, leadership process and the Board of Governors. And that's how we, how we run this organization. Okay, so nobody said slow the mail down. And if some, some, nobody called you later on and said, hey, you're doing a good job of slowing the mail down. They didn't call you about that yet. No, no awards for slowing the, the mail down from the White House, no. Uh, okay, so some of the actions you've taken, let me go through some of them and, and, and ask you uh, why you did some of them. So for example, um, it is said that you eliminated overtime for postal workers I guess, to save money. Um, and uh, was that right? No, no. With David, we, uh, uh, that's a little bit of misinformation. We ran 13% overtime before I came here. We're running 13% overtime uh, now. And, uh, you know, part of, uh, 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 part of the reason we're running overtime is because of the pandemic. We have a lot of absenteeism in, in certain hot, hot, hot spots. And we need to, uh, uh, so that's how we supplement our labor requirements. But in the long run, that is a problem for the Postal Service. And after we get through the election and the pandemic, that is something I'm very much going to be uh, uh, focused on. We incur, you know, four or five billion dollars overtime a year. And it also brings instability into our workforce. So that's one of the things I'm really looking at doing, trying to bring stability into the organization. Uh, uh, it's good for everybody. Okay. Another thing that you did is you had some mail sorting machines and you kind of took them away from like the Postal Service somehow. Um, why did you get rid of those mail sorting machines? Yeah, again, no, 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 and a million times no. I didn't, I didn't do that either. Mail, you think, I don't remember the circumstances. As I, I don't know if I mentioned this in the show when we were talking prior. The circumstances when I came into the organization, where we had just briefed Congress, we're looking to lose twenty billion dollars, run out of cash in September, and uh, uh, have no, uh, no, no answer to that. We had no finance. Our, our loan, our CARES Act loan, was on the. On, on the sidelines, we couldn't get to a negotiated deal. That's what I focused on in the, in, in the beginning. Collect uh, these sortation machines; uh, those are processes that have been around for a long time. Uh, they ran at about 35 to 40 percent uh, utilization. There are experts in the field with uh, that understand our capacity to process mail and so forth. These machines are costly, uh, uh, costly to keep up at that type of utilization. And those decisions were made, you know, at the, at the field level uh, and have been ongoing. I heard about sortation machines when I read it in the newspaper. Okay. What about the collection boxes? We're all familiar with these blue collection boxes that seem to be in a lot of people's neighborhoods. And it is said that you got rid of a lot of those collection boxes. Is that true? And why did you do that? We have, <laughs> it's, no, it's uh, uh, not true. We have about 140,000 collection boxes throughout the, the nation. And that has been... Um, you know, our, our address, our address base has grown uh, significantly. So it gives us larger geographic areas to cover. Uh, the mail volume has dropped uh, significantly over the last 10 years. So some of these collection boxes have very few pieces of, of mail. There's been an ongoing uh, process over the last 10 years. We've removed about 3,000 uh, collection boxes a year. Uh, there's a process that's, you know, within the organization spread throughout the areas as to which ones uh, uh, get, 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 uh, get moved. And uh, that was another one I read in the paper. Now, there's plenty of places when we make these changes, we also evaluate other access. And there's 
You can access another blue box, which would be close by. You can go to our, one of our 32,000 post offices spread throughout, uh, uh, which is uh, basically in every American community. Or you can give it to our mail carrier who, who, who shows up at your house six days a week. So uh, this is part of the inputs that we make when we, when we take these boxes away. All right. One of the other charges that has been made is that you told workers, if the mail isn't ready to be, to, uh, be delivered, leave and go out on your route uh, without all the mail. In other words, you, you told people to don't wait for all the mail to, to be given to them. Just get out on the, uh, and, and then the route and start delivering whatever you have. Is that fair or true? Or? No, no, no. Uh, the, the big change. So let's talk about the two big changes that I, I made. One was to run our trucks on time. We run about 48 to 50,000 uh, uh, trucks a day. Uh, and they were running late and they were running uh, based on judgment. And this is the, this is the essence of uh, the, the key attribute in running our network. And if our trucks don't run on time, uh, downstream processes, which are mail carriers, uh, uh, don't run on time and our plants don't uh, you know, produce our, our upstream processes, our plants don't produce uh, to, a, to a schedule, and it creates chaos and additional, uh, uh, additional uh, uh, cost. I work with the team to get those trucks, uh, uh, you know, to run on time with the mail in them. That was the, that, that was the direction. It was a good plan. We, had, uh, we could have had a better execution. We're recovering, uh, we're recovering from that right now. Uh, the other big change I made was reorganize, reorganizing the, the Postal Service, 55,000 uh, administrative personnel throughout seven regions in the nation. And when I leave here, to me, that's going to be, and I, I believe we'll, we'll see this uh, manifest itself, uh, one of the most impactful changes that I, that, that, uh, that I will make because it's creating better lines of, uh, lines of uh, uh, control and authority and responsibility and clarity. And uh, those were the two changes okay. that uh, I made. The rest are pieced together stories. Okay, so there was a federal judge in Washington state that has, I guess, issued an injunction saying all these things that are being done, don't do them for a while. Um, and it, the question is, are you going to appeal that uh, decision? So uh, we're, in nego uh, we're in negotiations right now. With, so I didn't look at my email from late last night until this morning, because I knew I was going to be on the show and I didn't want to get, uh, uh, get uh, 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 upset or anything. But uh, many of the things that the judges have decided that we already announced we were doing, you know, a month and a half ago when I uh, uh, put the uh, uh, stop to some of these things that were normal processes for us, where we are in negotiations with them. And uh, hopefully we will uh, uh, come to a... Uh, uh, come to a conclusion without having to uh, 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 appeal them. And, you know, the American public needs to know we are prepared and committed to deliver election mail and that these, these rulings are really not necessary. But at the end of the day, we abide by the law uh, and the decisions will be made uh, between us and the Justice Department whether we appeal them or not, if we don't get the, satisfaction. The decision to appeal or not, is that the Postal Service decision, the Justice Department decision, or the White House decision, who's in charge of making that decision? Not the White House. White House is not, <laughs> not okay. uh, the Justice Department is the, will be the uh, uh, entity that, the organization that leads us through this and make the decision, okay. should we move forward, in conjunction with our legal department, which is you know, working very closely with them. One of the other decisions was made by a New York judge uh, last week as well, uh, Judge Marrero, I think it was, and he said, you have to make certain that first class, that, that all election mail is considered first class mail. So is that a problem for you? Or are you gonna appeal that decision? Yeah, so, I mean, that is a typical process. Uh, he's making a decision on stuff, on something that we already do. Uh, you know, first class is a, is a definition of a class of mail and has a certain, you know, uh, 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 treatment to that class, that class of mail. We're talking about the physical handling of ballots. And in many cases, we treat ballots with a higher priority than, uh, than first class mail. And we will be advancing, we will maintain the, the processes that we have always in the past, which is if we see a ballot, we want to get it through the system and get it delivered quickly. Hey, you recently had a call with the, uh, I guess, 50 secretaries of state uh, from the country, from each of the states, relating to a, a, a postcard, I guess you had sent out to people about uh, mail. Um, and you said in that call, uh, as it's reported in the press, 
that maybe the, the, you should have consulted them. Uh, what was all that about? Yeah, so um, uh, I, I think what I said is off, we, we got the, uh, um, so here's what it's about, okay? We, uh, the Postal Service is probably the most, it is the most stable part of our mail-in vote process over the last several years, right? Our processes have been the same. Our delivery times and, uh, and, and so forth have been the same. And our message has been the same. It's basically vote early. It's, uh, it's like you don't send your Mother's Day card on Mother's Day, right? If, if you wanted to get it before Mother's Day. And then votes are, I don't know if my mother's watching, but votes are more important. I suggest that you, you take it a little more care than you would a Mother's Day card. The, the, the out, we went, but states, there's 50 states, all with different requirements, and they're evolving requirements. Some states still haven't made their decisions yet. So we set out at the beginning of the year to um, recognizing that was going to be more mail-in votes this year uh, to uh, uh, to uh, educate the, the public and work with the state electoral boards. We've had we've had we have election committees here from our board. Our board has an election committee to my management team to our union leadership is involved with election committees right down to our districts and our, 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 our people in the. Uh, uh, it, throughout the whole nation. And the purpose of that is to educate the public on our physical distribution processes and the timing of, of, of voting. We have um, a website, we have um, uh, commercials we put out, videos, uh, meetings. We've made like 10,000 contacts throughout the, throughout the country at different elect, electoral p p uh, personnel. This was a general, the, the postcard we sent out was a general uh, general statement to the public to basically request your ballot early if you're going to vote by mail and vote early. Uh, it was a high level message. In okay. some cases, uh, it wasn't high enough and it conflicted with a couple of the states. And that's where uh, uh, they, uh, uh, where, where we got uh, some of the complaints. I want to say though, we had a great deal of appreciation from many states in our efforts to educate, uh, to educate the public on voting by mail. Did you talk about, did you say your, your mother was watching? No, I don't know if she was, but if she was, I, and I was, I, I, I wanted to, to know that Mother's Day card is important, but not okay. as important as your ballot. But your mother is alive. She is, she is. And does she tell you, does she ever say, Lewis, why did you take this job? Does she ever say that to you? She says, why is everybody picking on you? <laughs> so um, let me go back to the first class mail situation. So if somebody wants to mail their, their voter or their uh, ballot in, the best thing to do is to mail it as soon as possible. Is that right? I would say yes. As much time as you can give us to handle it, the better. It is. And it just makes common sense. Get your vote, uh, make your decision, get your ballot, make your decisions and get it in, uh, get it in early. Okay, so um, some people say that the Postal Service loses lots of money and maybe it could be more efficient. I think you, one of your uh, missions is to make it more efficient, but uh, should the Postal Service make money or should it break even or does it matter if it loses money? No, it, it matters. It's kind of violates the law if we don't cover our costs. There, there is a, uh, you know, we are legislated to be self-sustaining and uh, it just kind of amazes me how that's never in the discussion. And uh, we've lost $10 billion a, a, a year and planted, you know, without change, we plan to, that that's what will happen for the next uh, 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 ten, 10 years. With regard to efficiency, there's, there's two ways I look at that. One is we're required, um, uh, our universal service obligations to deliver to 100, every house, every address in America, 161 million addresses, uh, six days a week. That is an inefficient thing. A, a private sector business would not be able to, to do that. We deliver mail on mules in the Grand Canyon and on small airplanes up in Alaska uh, each day. So it is really a, uh, 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 but that's a mission. That's our mission. And I'm, uh, I'm a defender of that and believe in that. And I think that long term, that, that's our strength. So those types of inefficiencies exist just in the nature of what we do. And then there's our operational inefficiencies uh, which are which we what I'm working on with the team and we, we have uh, goals there that we'll get to right after the election and I believe we can get at them and they're not small I mean they're real dollars and it will help us towards sustainability. Now some people say uh, why don't we just privatize the postal service take it away from the government completely and let the private sector figure out how to make something like that work. Do you have a view on whether that's a good or bad idea? 
I think it's a bad idea. Uh, I don't think, uh, uh, first of all, I don't think it would work within the, you know, to the, uh, 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 it's not something the American public would want to see. Uh, 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 second of all, uh, we would have, who would get the mule run down the Grand Canyon, you know, for 55 cents in a private business. It wouldn't, that wouldn't, uh, uh, that wouldn't happen. And the last thing is uh, we would require legislation for that. And, uh, we know how that goes. Uh, okay. So that's not, not anything that's on my agenda, nor do I think it would work. Now, some people have said that the Postal Service is losing money for two reasons, in addition to some of the things you've mentioned, the mule going down the Grand Canyon and that kind of thing. But one is that because of email, people aren't sending as much first-class mail as they used to, and first-class mail is, relatively speaking, more profitable. Is that a fair or unfair statement? Uh, I think some of it is uh, an accurate statement that first class mail is down and that uh, we, we, we have uh, uh, an, an industry that has evolved, that it competes with us, and that's electronic communication and digital, com digital marketing and, and social media and, and, and so forth. Uh, whether first class mail is less profitable or not, this is the way I look at it, uh, David. We have a network, and this network costs us $80 billion a year to deliver our service and we charge 70 billion for it. And that's the difference, the $10 billion there. And uh, how we get at that involves both uh, uh, legislation, uh, freedom from the uh, 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 PRC's 10-year uh, model, we're waiting for decisions on, on that, and us driving up, you know, operational efficiencies, getting cost out, and new revenue growth, which we have plans for. So it, it's, a, it's a, a, a bunch of uh, uh, different things that, that drive together. Where, in fact, we make or lose money um, um, is uh, still under discussion here under my tenure. Okay. Uh, some people say, in fact, I think the President of the United States has said that a lot of companies like Amazon, they are using the service and they're not uh, fully paying the full freight of what it costs. So Amazon is using all these for e-commerce and Amazon and other e-commerce companies. Is it fair to say that you're not charging them enough? Is that a big problem? Uh, I, I don't, I mean, I, I think there, uh, when we, when we get, you know, if you look at the, uh, the, the postal service trying to cover its costs and that's a break even, uh, 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 goal and reinvesting in it into our infrastructure, um, uh, uh there, uh, we're, we're short and price is, uh, one of the, one of the tools in our toolbox, uh, 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 uh you know, to get there. With regard to Amazon's uh, 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 pricing, I think that the, the team has negotiated. I think everything is in the well realm of, of, of respectable uh, 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 pricing. Um, uh, it's it, within the realm of, uh, of uh, being uh, a good deal for everybody right now, right? Because we're 10 billion uh, 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 short, but it's not, I, I don't, it's not four times the price or anything like that. All right. On the 10 billion, uh, do you think you'll get the money from Congress to make certain you have enough money to deliver the election mail and to make certain you break even for the year? Are you, is, are you negotiating with Congress for that additional amount of money or is you're likely to get it anyway? Uh, that's a, that's a, a, a mouthful in that, that, that question. Uh, okay. uh, so first of all, everyone needs to understand that we have enough money to get through the election. Uh, we have plenty of money for the election. We have plenty of resources for the election. And uh, uh, we will uh, uh, handle the election. Uh, the, the, the whole organization is committed to that. With regard to Congress, everybody should know who, who doesn't know, we really don't get any money from Congress. Uh, now, uh, uh, we, uh, there's lots of different bills floating around that, want, that uh, 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 you know, promise to give us uh, money. They, they're not even close to getting a uh, 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 passed. And uh, look, we take pride in the whole self-sustaining objective here at the organization. So we don't want, we're not looking for handouts. We want to, uh, we, we're on a self-improvement uh, mission here right now. There is, I have asked the Congress and, and the Treasury to uh, fund us for our COVID uh, losses. Uh, they were, you know, with volume being down, we still delivered uh, everywhere. And uh, th those costs should be covered. It's in the range of seven to $10 billion that I've asked for. But uh, other than that, we're kind of on our, uh, uh, you know, kind of on our own, unless there's some major legislation that comes about, which I don't, uh, 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 I, I don't, I don't see. And if they just gave us money, we'd be back 
in two years, whatever the amount is, right? Unless we have some fundamental change to our business model. We have a broken business model and we need to change that. So Congress doesn't give you money, but does Congress lend you money from time to time that you borrow money? Because how do you meet your deficit every year if, unless you borrow the money from somebody? We don't pay our bills in some cases, right? We have, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we have uh, the, you know, the, uh, uh, the deferment of some of our retirement payments. And we do borrow, uh, uh, we do borrow from uh, a, a treasury oriented banking system uh, we have about uh, uh, 15, uh, 15 billion. We did get to a deal with, uh, when I came, the deal with Treasury for 10 billion the, under the CARES Act was kind of dead. Uh, and I, I called Treasury and we worked uh, to re, uh, uh, work with the sec- uh, Treasury Secretary to get it back on the table. And we came to uh, uh, reasonable accommodations uh, for us to borrow money. Let's talk about COVID. Uh, many companies have been working remotely during COVID. Um, I guess the postal service can't really work remotely because you've got to deliver the mail. Um, so how do you manage the postal service uh, remotely like many other companies or have you just not, not been doing anything remotely? Uh, so, uh, you know, within our administrative offices, we have uh, uh, many that are working uh, re- re- remotely from the administrative side. Um, uh, you know, we have basically two stories here on, uh, on, on the pandemic. One is the story of, you know, we've, uh, the tragedy that uh, the whole nation has uh, uh, experienced. We've had about 10,000 uh, of our coworkers uh, contract the disease. We have about 2,000 out right now with it. And we've lost 91, 91 of our, our, our co- coworkers. And it's really been... Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, you know, a, a tragedy like it is for the rest of the nation. The other side of the story is uh, extremely impressive, and most of it done before I, uh, all of it really done before I got here. And this is one of the great things about the Postal Service, how it can uh, 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 gear up and focus on uh, national emergencies, uh, 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 our efforts in terms of getting PPE out to the, to, you know, to the workers, our procedures, putting in procedures and, 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 and so forth to take care of the workers. Great work with our union leadership to give us work, work rule relief so we can uh, 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 move forward. The union leadership was very involved with us on looking at safety in our plants and to our carriers. And uh, this all came together very, very quickly. And we could say we delivered, you know, to 161 million homes, 99.8% before the pandemic, you know, uh, 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 you know get, getting there. And it, it only dropped a couple of, it's like 99.5. So we still fulfilled our mission. Uh, you know, throughout the, you know, throughout the nation on that. So, so on, another crisis you've been dealing with has been the fires on the West Coast. So how have you been able to deliver the mail if you have been able to? How, how are the postal workers health affected by the air and so forth? How are you dealing with that? So again, very similar type of impressive, uh, the most impressive thing to me in the organization is our ability to respond uh, uh, to, uh, to these national emergencies. Uh, where, you know, people not only are, you know, the, the communities dislodged from their homes and uh, uh, ha- have these issues, but we live in those communities. Our, our, our workers live, our employees live in those communities, yet they still have to, uh, 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 you know, go out. And it's actually like the first symbol of restoring normal behavior is when the mail starts showing up again. And it, it's really uh, uh, something special to see. I went down to Lake Charles Last week, we had the big, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the hurricane hit Lake Charles and it was bad. You could see how bad it, you know, how torn up the, the city was. And I went to one of our delivery units and it was just that most of these most of these workers didn't have lights. They may not have water in their homes, but they were coming and working hard to, uh, 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 you know, to deliver, you know, to deliver their, their, their mail to their communities. And from a, a safety and administrative standpoint, the process, I mean, we have, um, we have air quality tests, uh, masks that we get, you know, different types of equipment we give people to go out. So we, we maintain the safety of, of our employees and we work with our union leadership to make sure that everybody agrees that we, uh, uh, it's safe to proceed. And then uh, we do uh, the heroic work that we do in these cases. Okay. So um, when I was growing up, um, I, I believe I have it right. The mail was delivered twice a day. It's hard to believe that. But I think that's true. And, um, and on Saturdays as well, and as it still is, do you think the mail needs to be delivered on Saturdays as well? Some people have suggested cutting out Saturday delivery as a way of saving money. Do you have a view on that? 
I, I, I do. I think that um, uh, I, I think that six day a week uh, delivery is legislated. Uh, I think it's a, a hard thing to get changed, and I also think it's the strength of uh, uh, the, the strength of the organization. It's something I'm taking a gamble on that we can uh, 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 that we can use to connect to uh, the American public in a, uh, a better way to entice them to use us more. And you got to remember, we also have in uh, we have 32,000 post offices in every uh, every every community. We get about a billion visits a year to these. Uh, to these uh, destination locations. And if we can, a combination of uh, the continued contact uh, with the American public from our carriers, it's, our, you know, it's one of the major reasons why we're the most trusted organization in the nation. And then it, it, you know, p potentially expanding some of our connection in the communities with our post offices. That's, uh, that's a big initiative of mine. Part of my reorganization was to separate and have a establish a, a, a whole uh, delivery and uh, retail and delivery part of the organization uh, headed by a very experienced uh, uh, a new chief uh, 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 retail and delivery officer here, Kristen Siever, a long time, uh, long time employee. And, we're, uh, and she also has a, 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 digi a digital background, IT background. And we're very, very much excited about the things we're gonna do in that area to help us grow. How many total employees does the Postal Service actually have? 640,000, 100,000 vets. 640,000. Uh, and, and is it the composition is what percentage are men and what percentage are women? What percentage are white? What percentage are African-American? Do you know? Uh, so we have about uh, 500,000 unionized employees. We have, as I said, 100,000 vets. We are about 40% minority uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in the organization. And I would guess that we reflect the, the, the male-female statistics of the, of, of, of the popu, you know, popu, population. Uh, it's really an unbelievable reflection of, uh, of, of the American public. And it, we're a big impact you know, to the American economy. So if I wanted to send a letter overnight to some place in the United States, I have, I, I guess, three big choices, UPS, uh, FedEx, and the Postal Service. Why should I pick the Postal Service? Let's suppose I'm not familiar with any of them and I just want to get a letter overnight delivered to somebody. Why, would I, why should I pick the Postal Service? So in, in general, we're cheaper. We deliver on time. And I'll say, I'll give my plug that it's good for America because we need to be sustainable. So I'm asking for everyone's business out there. Okay. So let me talk a moment for, about your own background. Um, uh, you grew up in New York, and um, you uh, ultimately went to college, I think, in Florida, but you moved back to New York. Your father had a small, as I understand, trucking business of some type. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And how did you take a small trucking business, which I think had less than a dozen employees, maybe less than 20 employees, and build it into one of the larger logistics companies in the United States? Uh, how did you do that? What was the, your skill set to do that? My skill set was in uh, public accounting. I was a CPA, an auditor. I had seen many different industries, you know, I had audited many different uh, uh, companies and that gave me uh, 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 a background to, to look at how to integrate different operational aspects of many, many different industries. When you're in a logistics business, uh, you know, we, we, we handled everything from uh, Mickey Mouse to mailbags, aircraft parts to cell phones. So you, that type of... Uh, uh, you know, experience in the in the auditing world uh, helped me. One of the big pushes was I didn't like trucking, <laughs> so I needed to move on into something else. And at that point, that was the beginning when I really got my running legs. It was the beginning of the introduction of technology, it, you know, information processing technology into uh, uh, into into business. And uh, uh, I, I looked to do broader to try and differentiate ourselves broader turnkey type projects using technology and engineering. And uh, I was a good salesman and I convinced people uh, at that particular point to move, move, move forward and uh, uh, you know, with my, with my, with my organization one step at a time. And uh, 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 we, we had, uh, once we started to uh, have our model out there, it gained uh, very wide acceptance and we became very selective in the type of business that we did. Now, you ultimately moved the company to North Carolina about 20 plus years ago. 
How come you don't have a North Carolina accent? You still have a New York accent. <laughs> well, I chose to use my New York accent today for you, Dave. Okay. <laughs> but you moved your company there. And what was it, for people that don't know, what does a logistics company do? What is your actually the service that you're providing people when you're a logistics company? What is that? So, um, you know, I, I always looked at our, and there's many different things uh, that different logistics companies do. Uh, uh, we, uh, we manage transportation uh, and we set up big, big centers and had, you know, our leading, uh, our, our leading uh, service uh, uh, strength was in technology. And, and we were often rated one of the top uh, 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 providers of complex logistics solutions for organizations, uh, you know, in the world. And uh, uh, these were companies like Boeing, Verizon, uh, Disney, and we ran call centers, we ran planning, we planned inventory, we, we uh, 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 took orders, processed them to, you know, very much uh, specific schedules and, uh, and shipped them to consumers and a lot of IT interaction uh, between us, our shipper, our clients, our main clients and their clients. And that's really what we do. We, while we, uh, we probably moved about $60 billion of goods uh, one piece at a time each year. So you ultimately merged your company with another logistics company and you stayed there for a while and then you left it. And then recent years you've been involved in, in philanthropic and other uh, matters. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yep. I have a. Okay. okay. So uh, tell me back to the postal service um, today. Uh, what is the single biggest challenge uh, that you face? I assume it not related to the election issue, which we've discussed, but the single biggest challenge the Postal Service faces is what, in your view? Uh, so I, I think um, uh, we, I, I, we, we, need, we need to change uh, how we approach the marketplace. And we're very mission driven here. We have a great mission oriented uh, 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 culture. And now we're, we're trying to move into have it be a, a winning culture. When you have a winning culture, we need to operate with more precision. Uh, we need to introduce new products into the marketplace to help spur revenue growth. Uh, and we need to, uh, 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 we need to uh, advance ourselves in all aspects of, of, of what a normal business uh, uh, would be. So I look at it more as the opportunities we have as opposed to the challenges. The challenges everyone knows, mail, first class mail volume is going down. So how do we, how do we stop that? How do we reverse that from happening and move forward? Or how do we supplement that? We have ideas that are going on around here now. We have, uh, uh, we, we have uh, high cost in many areas. Uh, how, do we get, how do we resolve uh, uh, the, the, the high cost issues? We have plans for that. And then, you know, we have a broken business model. We need the PRC. The PRC is in the 14th year of a 10-year analysis. Uh, we need them to make a decision. Uh, they've already agreed that the model is broken. We need them to make a decision and we need some legislation. All of those are the answer for the Postal Service and we're gonna push forward uh, uh, you know, to get them done. Now in the, in the private sector, there are a lot of new technologies, artificial intelligence technologies, all kinds of new data collection and, and dissemination in, in, uh, matters that have been uh, used in, in the private sector to make things more efficient. Uh, are there one or two or three technologies you think over the next five years or so that the Postal Service could adapt or adopt that would ultimately make the Postal Service more efficient? So we have a, a, a lot of information technology. We have some automation in, uh, in, in our plants. I don't, I mean, I see us seeing that to evolve, but when we look at, we have to align the technology where our strength is. And our strength is that human interaction each day at the 161 million addresses and our, our retail centers throughout every community. And how do we, how do we enhance that, that connection with the American people with, who are eventually destination customers uh, through technology? How do we enhance our communication there with them, our interaction with them so we stay connected? That's really where our focus is going to be on technology as we move okay. forward. Now back for a moment to the, uh the issue of the, of the mail-in ballots and so forth. Um, President Trump has said he's worried about maybe fraud and so forth relating to those uh, mail-in ballots. I think you have said that you disagree with the president on that. At least you, your view is that you think the mail-in ballots will be delivered and there's not fraud. So is that correct? In, am I correctly summarizing your position? So I want to say I, the Postal Service will, uh, will do its job to deliver 
it, it's to deliver the ballots, okay? And when we, when the president goes into that, the postal service doesn't uh, is not equipped to do it, which uh, um, uh, he's incorrect with that. We're equipped to do it, and we're going to move. We're going to deliver ballots. The rest of the discussion, I, I don't comment on. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what has been the biggest surprise to you about Washington D.C.? You've lived uh, your career in New York and in North Carolina. Now you're in Washington. Uh, has it been a, a more difficult environment than you thought? What's the biggest surprise uh, on the upside and the biggest surprise on the downside to this job? So, you know, I've been in and out of uh, Washington. I wasn't not uh, uh, around the uh, various uh, things that went on in Washington, but very, very, very little time yet. I, I, I would say I, when I comment on that, I have to go to why I'm here. Right. And, and the, 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 the surprise uh, uh, really is um, uh, in, in a good way uh, how well I've been embraced by the, by the team here. Uh, and how well they've engaged the ideas that we've collectively come up to, to, to together with and moved very, very fast. When you think within 45 days, some of the impacts that we've had while be, being publicized as negative, organizationally, uh, we are prepared to move forward and gain, you know, uh, 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 achieve some of the objectives we had. And that's very rewarding and, a, and a, a pleasant surprise when you think about coming into the bureaucracy, so to speak, of, of, of Washington, D.C. Um, I, the, um, uh, on a, on a downside, um, uh, there's a lot of misinformation that gets promoted for a lot of different reasons. I, I don't care to get into, but it is, uh, filled with misinformation. Okay. So, um, you have been appointed by the postal service board of governors in which you also are a member. You're a member, are you, you're a member of the board of governors. I am. I am. And, um, so your term goes for a number of years as I understand it. So, um, if President Trump is reelected, I presume you would want to stay. But if President Biden or Vice President Biden is elected president, um, you have the right, I guess, under the contract you have to stay. Would you be interested in staying as well or you don't really want to do that then? I, 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 uh, I have developed a really, really good bond with the team here. They're engaging the objectives and I want to see them. I want to see them through. I think we have a path and we have a plan. Uh, to have a successful postal service. We need to bring Congress along, we need to bring the PRC along and, 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 and a few other things, but we have a plan and I would like to see that through no matter who's president. Okay, and so um, today, what would you like people to most know about the postal service? Let's suppose somebody's watching and they, they just gonna only remember a paragraph or two paragraphs about the postal service. What is the message you would like them to take away from this discussion about the postal service? Uh, I think the, the, the biggest number one thing to understand, which I think most of the public does, is the 630,000 uh, women and men that work here are unbelievably committed to fulfilling the mission, uh, you know, to the American people. It's really, uh, uh, it's heartwarming and I'm very proud to be thrown in this seat and be the, the leader of this organization because the, uh, 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 the, the, the commitment is... Uh, uh, is, uh, uh, you know, second to none in missions that, 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 that I've seen. I also, so that, that's that. Also on the other side, I think the American public should know uh, uh, that we do not get funded by the government. We don't get taxpayer dollars. We are providing a service and we, the, the, the mandate from, from the Congress is that we provide that service in a way uh, and we charge in a manner that covers our costs. And there's often misleading things about service and funding and, 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 and so forth. Uh, uh, so uh, those are two things. You have a very committed uh, uh, organization that is going to grow and prosper. We are committed to uh, expanding our connection with the American public. And now we don't receive taxpayer dollars. And we're proud of that. And we just need to operate uh, uh, in a little better manner and get a couple of breaks uh, you know, from the regulators and the legislators. Well, you've been under a lot of pressure for sure. Obviously, you've gotten a lot of attention. Uh, do you have time for any rest and relaxation? Can you go out and just, you know, play golf or do anything, or you don't have time for that anymore? No, I, I don't. Uh, you know, it's been, um, um, uh, you know, pressure. We, David, you and I, we've had pressure in our careers, and it's, it's just, just a different type of pressure. So I don't feel uh, uh, a pressure. I'm in, invigorated by the work. I've worked very hard uh, uh, before to build my, my company. 
the five year retirement was fun. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm having fun now. Uh, I, I thrive on uh, uh, moving organizations and uh, trying to, uh, uh, when, when you think about the role here, it's very similar to what I did as a third party provider in, uh, uh, in the private sector, is integrate large organizations to, uh, 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 to uh, ad advance their service mission for the lowest cost we can, can do. So I am, I'm feeling good. And um, uh, I'm, I'm going to continue to, you know, charge forward. Okay, a final question. Uh, do you get any inspiration from Benjamin Franklin, whose uh, portrait is behind you? Does he ever whisper any ideas about how to make the Postal Service more efficient? I think when he was running it, um, he actually delegated it to his wife to run, yeah. as I understand it. But do you have any uh, inspiration from, uh, uh, the, yeah. from Benjamin Franklin? Uh, not, not, uh, not yet. I just think that, uh, it's very, uh, I'm very proud uh, and humble to be in the, uh, in the seat that, uh, that, that he, uh, 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 occupies. I read his book. I know you did an interview with Walter Isaacson on his, uh, uh book. I, I, I watched it and, uh, uh, no, it's just, uh, you know, it's a public service. Uh, I'm a patriot. I, I enjoy that aspect of it. And when you look back, uh, you know, who, who was the, who, who was the, one of the founding fathers that were involved with this? It's Benjamin Franklin. And it, you know, I'm awed by the fact that I'm sitting here. Thank you very much, Mr. Postmaster General. Thank you for explaining the issues I tried to uh, raise with you. And I appreciate uh, all your time and effort and good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, David, for having me. This was fun. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it.